Hey guys, Greg C96 here, picking up right where we left off with some more human resource machine. Zero terminated some. Let's get started. Yes, we believe in educating our employees on the job here. Do you know what a zero terminated string is? Yes, it's a very old technique and we don't expect you to know, so you may ask me about it if you like. Or you may ask an external source, whatever helps you get the job done. Tell me more. What is a zero terminated string? Yes, I can tell you. A string is just a list of values like 12345 or 4992. But how do we know when one string ends and another begins? We can mark the end of a string with something special, like a zero. Here are two zero terminated strings, 123 and 98. See how it works? Sometimes a string can be empty. Here are three strings. Notice the one in the middle is empty. Yup. A string cannot contain the number zero since zero means something special. Now we know. Back to work. Inbox is filled with zero terminated strings. What's that? Ask me, your boss. Add together all the numbers in each string. Okay, so. Inbox. Copy to zero. Inbox. Add zero. Uh, jump of zero to down here, and if not, we jump back here to copy to to this phase of inbox at zero. Copy to zero. But if it's zero, <laughs> so immediately, if we get a zero from the inbox, we want to jump right to the outbox. But if it's not a zero, it'll copy it to zero, go back to the inbox, add it to zero, copy that value to zero, and then it'll jump back to the inbox. Then if that inbox is ever a zero, same thing, you jump right to the outbox. What? Six. Four. Copy it to there. Got a zero. Wait, what step of the way was it? Hmm. There's our nine. Oh, if that one's a zero, though, we want to jump down here, copy from zero, then outbox. Yeah, but if we get a zero immediately, we want to just sum that to zero. There we go. We good. Um, I got it. Programming's a thing I do. I used 11 commands though. I optimize it in the fewest steps. Let's see, can I do one less command? You know what, screw it, I don't care. Can I go back to the elevator and that's complete now? Whatever. Fibonacci visitor. I feel like this one's gonna suck. The back hallway is for advanced employees only. Are you sure you wanna be here? Night shift assignments are optional, you know, and they are difficult. If you need to ask for help, just be look here looking through these categories. I'll just be here looking, yeah. Fibonacci sequence. Sum of the two numbers just before it. First two numbers are one and one. So the third number is two. Three, five, eight, 
on for a while, forever really. Shall we continue? Okay. So, end box. We wanna copy it to two. Let's rename two. Um, Fibmax. Okay. Let's call that last Val. Okay. So Okay, we'll just call that one. So I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll bump one to one. So we actually get that one there. And we'll copy that to Fibonacci max. And we'll go from one. Then add one. We'll then copy that to last value. And then we'll subtract Fibonacci max. If that's zero, Or if that's less than zero, that means we're still under the maximum. Whew, okay, I'll figure this out. Um, what? Let's call this current val, curve val. Okay. Subtract Fibonacci max. Copy that to last val. Wait a second here. It's a summation of all the numbers. So before, so we have to copy it to last value. So you have one. So you grab your one. Oh brother, okay. So you're starting it with one either way. And you copy your maximum there. You grab one, you add one, boom, that gets you two. And you copy that to last val. So that saves the two here. Hmm, the whole building is shaking a little bit. That's weird. I just noticed that. So you copy that to... Oh, wait, hold on, no. You copy from one... Actually, instead of calling that one, let's call this the last value. First thing we're going to do is bump last value, and we're going to copy it to Fibonacci max from the inbox. Now we're going to copy from last val. Add last val. We're going to call this the current val. We'll delete that. So, so we're going to add last val. And instead of adding to five, we're going to add, put that to current value. So we have our current value and our last value saved up. And then we're going to take our current value 
subtract Fibonacci max. If it's negative, that means Fibonacci max is currently greater than. So that means we can still keep going. Now we can copy from current val, add last val. And then we copy that to the current value, subtract Fibonacci max. And once again, if it's negative, we go to here and we continue this. But now if it's not negative, we wanna jump. If it's negative, we wanna continue because it's still less than the Fibonacci max. But if it's positive, we're greater than Fibonacci max. So then what we wanna do is jump to here copy from our last value outbox that and then jump back to here wait we want to do save this as a one bump last val and then we'll copy from last val copy to one that'll put a one in last val and then we'll do our normal stuff and then at the very end we'll jump up to here and then copy from one copy that to last val that'll be a little clunky Adds a bunch of unnecessary stuff at the very beginning there. Boom, two is our current value. It's negative, so it'll go back to there. Add them up. Oh, wait a second, hold on now. So it subtracts Fibonacci max. Hmm. Now I'm running into the problem of I need to save the last value. How does I do? Uh, ho, ho, ho. All right, same type of thing as the last video. You'll get yourself a jump cut to either my Eureka moment or I figured it out, I'm an idiot. So, expect a jump cut incoming. Jump cut. Okay, guys, I am back. I'm gonna call an episode after this puzzle, though. It might be a shorter episode. All I know is I'm at stupid long since I started recording. So I've been at this episode for like half an hour now, even though it might only be about 10 minutes of content. And this puzzle got me good. I just ran it. Ran successfully. So optimization challenges. 19 or fewer commands is the size challenge. I use 33. <laughs> Not anywhere close to size. Over on the speed challenge, complete 156 or fewer steps. I blew that out of the water with 122. So, let's take a look. So, I added a temporary variable in too. So, we took a last fail, bumped that up to 1, and copy it over to 1. So, we constantly have a 1 saved. Okay. And after that, go to the inbox and copy that to Fibonacci max. And we copy from the last value, which is one. So we inbox the last value. We add the last value together and we copy that to the current value. We compare it to Fibonacci max. 
If it's negative, it jumps down here, we copy from last value, and we outbox the last value because we know that one's okay. And we take last value, we copy it to our temporary variable, we move current value to last value. Then we add temp and we get that as our current value. So basically we're using temp to move this value here, so we can move this value here so we can get the new current value. And then after we do that, we jump. Specifically, we jump to here. Once again, we subtract the Fibonacci max. And if it's negative, we know we can keep going. So it jumps down to here where it copies last value and goes to the outbox because we're good. If it's zero, however, I know it means we've finished a Fibonacci sequence at the maximum of what it can be. So when it's zero, we jump down here, we take our last value, we outbox it. Then we outbox the Fibonacci max because we know it's part of the sequence. And then we take one and then copy that over to last value to clear that back out for next time. Then we jump, and I believe we jump all the way back up to the top where we go from the inbox, copy it to Fibonacci max, and we take that last value, the one, and we start by outboxing that because we know each one's gonna start off with the first one no matter what. And then we can see it run. And it works. Actually, let me step it back a little bit here. And we can step through this to see what's going on. All right, so. Actually, let's just start again. All right, so boom. So first things we do in the very beginning, we bump that to be one, and we copy that over to one, so we always have a one saved. Go here next, and we get our Fibonacci maximum, and we copy it to our Fibonacci max. Go to current value, or go to last value, send that to the outbox. Take last value, we add it with the last value. The first time we just add it together and double it to get two. We save that to current value. We compare the current value to the Fibonacci maximum, and if it's negative, we go and we take last value and send it to the outbox. And then we take our last value, put that in temp, take our current value, move that to last, and then add our last to our temp to get current. Then we check current against the maximum. If it's negative, we do that same cycle again. Still negative, we keep going. Subtract one more time, still negative, keep going. Boom. Now we get to one that's greater than. When we subtract it, it's not negative and it's not zero. So we go to the last value, we outbox it, copy from one, put that in last value. Then it jumps up to the top, and we go to inbox, copy to the Fibonacci max, and then we outbox last value to get started again and runs through it the same way. The reason this jump of zero command is here is, say we have the Fibonacci max on this one of 21, which is a part of a Fibonacci sequence. If it gets to zero, we wanna jump it down, so it puts the last value and that current value so that we actually fill everything out. So, let it run. Oh, perfect, it's gonna show us a 21 this time. So once we get a little closer, I'll start stepping through it so you can see what I mean. 21, so we see it's zero. So if it's zero, it jumps down here, so it takes the previous, uh, the last value, and then outboxes the max. And then we just go back to the one, we do that, and as soon as we can't reach the inbox and it's empty, we stop and the program continues. Oh man, but yeah, so I went way over on size, but I blew it out of the water on speed. And like I said, I'm thinking we'll call that an episode, because I've been working on this episode for like 40 minutes. I don't know how much content there is, because like I said, there's going to be a jump cut. Like it if you like it, dislike it if you don't like it, leave a comment down below telling me how stupid I am about, you know, oh, it took you so long to do that when it was just this simple any of that stuff really check out the rest of the guys at bigboxofgamers.com and as always i'll see you guys next time peace